The Africa Center for Energy Policy is accusing the Power Ministry of deceiving Parliament for giving different figures as cost of 10 gas turbines procured from the Amery Group to ameliorate the crippling power crisis the country is going through. If you look at what was presented to Parliament and the statement that has come out today, it's marks of deception because if you told Parliament that it's going to cost us uh, 411 million and now you are agreeing that the cost of the plant is uh, uh, 210, then you did not help Parliament to even do their own due diligence. So, Kwabna Donko has however denied this. But even though Chairman of the Mines Committee, Muta Wakilo Adam, says Parliament will look into the matter, a member of the committee, William Oreku Edu, is unhappy uh, and says that his research shows that the, the plant could actually be purchased at $220 million. But his calls was not heeded to when he raised it at the committee level. Our research um, came up that we could have purchased the machines for um, around $220 million. We raised that question and the answer given to us was that um, the machines were required on an emergency basis and it was not the time that we're going through now. So who is telling the truth? The Power Minister or Ethan? Indeed, how much did Ghana pay for the Amery plants? $510 million or $220 million? And if indeed the agreement signed by the Prime Minister was a dubious one, that has caused the country to pay $290 million more than it ought to pay, what could be the implications? This is today's big story. My name is Aisha Brown. Deputy Director of Ether Benjamin Boache claims Dr. Kwabnadonko, the power minister, was cited in a Norwegian newspaper and website as having signed a dubious agreement with an alleged Dubai-based froster, Umar Farouk Zahur, in the process of procuring the gas turbines. Now, the newspaper claims the power minister paid $510 million for five years for the plants, which ordinarily cost $220, uh, which means the country paid $290 million more than it ought to have paid. Let's listen to Deputy Director of ESA, Benjamin Boachi. If you look at what was presented to Parliament and the statement that has come out today, it's marks of deception because if you told Parliament that it's going to cost us uh, $411 million and now you are agreeing that the cost of the plant is uh, uh, 210 then you did not help Parliament to even do their own due diligence. Mm. Are you happy with their... Uh, explanation of all the issues or do you do you still have questions i, I think there, there are questions i mean it contradicts like i said what was given to parliament just as you read uh, you know the impression has been created that we are not paying uh, for the badges outright which is accurate uh, but we are going to pay uh, uh, vra is supposed to put up an escrow through which these payments will be made. So they don't care whether you're able to uh, uh, take your tariffs or not. They didn't negotiate for tariff. That is our own arrangement with PURC, which is also going to uh, be fed into uh, uh, the tariff. So we would need to be able to pay 850,000 per day per unit, you know, multiply uh, 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 across to the year as 102 million. And that is our liability to our Mary, uh, you know, uh, uh, for the plans that you are bringing here. So we are going to pay these amounts uh, over the period of five years. The options for us was that we could have bought this outright. I mean, we are a sovereign nation. If we wanted really to get these badges outright, we didn't need to go to GE, as uh, the minister said, would delay the process. There are agents across the world who have these plants in stock, brand new. We could have contacted any of them and bought it outright. If you didn't have the money and you have 102 or 118 million dollars per annum uh, to give to these people, you could have used that amount to buy what you can buy, you know, rather than committing annually to uh, 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 these badges. Another alternative is that if you look at our power plants, 
many of them are used plants. And if we wanted to buy used plants, we could have gotten these plants at $7 million, $10 million per unit. That 102, uh, 118 million could have bought all the capacity that these people are bringing for 510 million if we wanted to opt for used ones. You know, so these were the options that we had available to us, and we didn't choose any of them than to give our Mary a free $160 million for bringing, playing a middleman's role. And that is what is sad. But the power minister has issued a statement denying the claims. Dr. Kwamna Adonko insisted the $220 million quoted by the Norwegian newspaper was the estimated cost of the turbines without the cost of auxiliaries, balance of plants, civil works, substation installation of equipment, cost of financing, operation and maintenance. Now the statement said under the agreement with Ameri Energy, the cost of all these auxiliary works is being borne by Ameri Energy. Now the statement says, uh, further says that from the foregoing, it is false to claim that the government of the Ghana of Ghana signed a $510 million agreement for the plant when it should have been $220 million. But ASEP Deputy Director Benjamin Boache discussing the issue on the Super Morning Show said, while he would not entirely describe the deal as corrupt, he said people will have to exonerate themselves. Let's do some analysis now. And on the phone is uh, Honorable William uh, Oreku Edu, who is a member of the Mines and Energy Committee. Good evening. Many thanks for your time on today's Big Story. Hello, Honorable, you're on today's Big Story. Well, I think we're having a bit of a challenge getting the Honourable. Honourable, good evening and uh, many thanks for your time on today's Big Story. Well, let me come back to the studio where I have Francis Aban. He is with the Energy Desk. Francis, uh, good evening to you. Good evening, Aisha. Uh, you've been following this issue. Uh, on, on what basis is Ben Boache accusing the minister of signing a dubious deal? For well, well, they look at the contract that was sent to Parliament. ASEP does a lot of research when it comes to our energy needs and the contracts that we are signing. We know we are in a time where we are also looking for a lot of options to deal with our energy crisis. And so, government sought the help of the African and Middle East Resource Investment Group, AMERI, in getting us emergency gas plants that will provide a total of 250 megawatts of power. Now, what that will mean is that for the next five years, these plants will provide us the power needed to cut off the over 600 megawatts of power deficit that we are currently experiencing. This should have come in a bit earlier than we all expected, but indeed, uh, it's taken a bit longer than expected. So, the, so ASAP says that the cost involved in arriving at this contract, uh, which is said to be an emergency power badge, doesn't add up. Because right. when you look at the maths for General Electric that will build this gas plant for you, if you go directly to them to buy it on the market, you get it for some $220 million. So they're asking questions. How come we have to go through Amery? which also went to another company, Metka, to get us this same gas turbines from, um, from, um, from uh, General Electric right. through Ameri and Metka okay. for $510 million. Right. The difference, what is it being used for? Okay. Could we not have saved the country a lot of costs? Where was the value for money assessment right. that was supposed to be done? Indeed, those in, are the in, questions indeed, asking. indeed, a member of the Mines and Energy Committee raised that issue that, uh, of course, they had the research that showed that uh, this could have been purchased at $220 million. million dollars. But uh, it looks like uh, they were not listening to or the, 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 the committee didn't pay attention mm. to him. Let, let's listen to to uh, Honorable Redu Edu, who is raising that issue, and we can continue with the discussion. That came before the Committee of Mines and Energy. We perused it, and um, some concerns were raised. The cost element of it, and also the beneficial um, interest holders on the other side. Our re uh, research um, came up that we could have purchased the machines for um, around 220 million dollars. We raised that question and the answer given to us was that um, the machines were required on an emergency basis and it was not the time that we're going to now go around um, GE in particular to order the machines would have taken, which would have taken about nine months. That's what they said. So how many days did the Mines and Energy Committee have in perusing this document? <laughs> this is where the problem was. That was rushed. The document came before us a day a day before the meeting was held i think it was in the evening that the documents came to us and then we met over it 
a few hours. And, you know, this is the problem with the way Parliament works. Um, it, it, everything is rushed. Everything, the executive will wait and just bring stuff in on a rush, rush basis. And it really, I must be honest, it's, it doesn't, um, it's not very good. It is not the so best. you had less than 24 hours yeah. to pass such a major deal on energy? Came before us. For to, us to, to discuss, scrutinize. Yes, to scrutinize. I mean, we are not lawyers. Members of the committee are not lawyers. And we don't have lawyers there to help us in um, doing our, our job, especially when you have um, a big word of um, legal document. Yes, you didn't look at it with legal lens, but in this very few hours, you had to scrutinize this document. Clearly, you had concerns. Mm. You couldn't properly deal with it. And this is where we are now, isn't it? No, no, we raised the question. But you see, the, the document didn't just come to us. It been through the Attorney General, the current cabinet that passed it. It comes to us. We raised, we raised concerns. It goes to um, the floor. And um, Mr. Speaker asked his questions, all those in favor and all those against. And we vote on it. Voice vote. But what about the Mines and Energy Committee itself? Did you do due diligence oh, time, on behalf of Ghanaians? Of course. For the time that we had, the, 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 the time that was allotted for us um, uh, to um, deal with this particular agreement, we did the best I believe we could. Concerns were raised on some of the clauses in the agreement plus the price. And the reasons why they gave have been defeated. That was uh, Honorable William Oredu Edu, Oreku Edu. He's a member of the Mines and Energy Committee. And Francis, you actually had that interview yes. with him. And, and so what was the reasons uh, for them not being able to tell uh, the committee that, listen, let's not approve this because we, we suspect some foul play here? Okay, you realize that for this gentleman we spoke to, uh, Mr. William Oreku Edu, he's a minority member on the Mines and Energy right, Committee. Right, yes. And you know the challenge we have in Parliament is that because the majority are on the other side, even if minority views are expressed, the concern is that, yes, you will raise the concerns, but if the majority is deciding to pass things on your own, there's nothing you can do about but, it. But he that's, that that's, that's raised uh, it. with the whole House. Exactly. The house and even on the but, but on the committee level, I think that even the minority have their own say. Well, indeed, he said he raised the issue before the committee, and he was told that they would bring the further and better particulars. But again, I need to indicate that this particular agreement came before the committee and it had they had less than 48 hours so to approve to read the 49 page contract look at all the legal ramifications in that document and pass it so they had very little time to scrutinize this particular contract interesting uh, let me speak with uh kojopoku he's an energy expert who is on the phone who joined in the discussion good evening kojopoku many thanks for your time on today's thank story. you aisha how are you very well thank you hope you're doing well too so uh, well i can't be doing well when the what is going on in this country is going on how can i be doing well <laughs> so what do you make of the accusations the the back and forth that the prime minister paid 510 million dollars for five years for the plants which he will pay i'm told in the contract that he will pay 510 million dollars which could have ordinarily cost 220 million dollars and which means the country by paying 510 million dollars will pay an extra 290 million more than it ought to have paid well let me continue the conversation from what you just asked the gentleman he said that the gentleman someone he spoke to on the mines and energy commission said that they had the who, committee who told them that they had eight hours is that what he said he said 48 hours 48 who gave them 48 hours they are the committee who forced them that they should be 48 hours don't forget that the chairman is a, a majority uh, member no so i know but my point my point is meeting. that my, the committee is a committee if the committee needs one year to look at the document it needs one year right. to look at the document right. look these parliamentarians i'm sorry to say uh, they are the ones that today i feel very sad and i think they should come and tell Ghanaians that they are sorry okay because the sad thing about this deal is that this deal happened eight months ago right it's taking a norwegian company or a norwegian, a norwegian newspaper to, raise to bring a story issues. into ghana for now the opposition to now say they want a bipartisan inquiry and there are people in parliament that now uh, approve the deal did we hear a minority walk out in parliament on this deal we did not you understand? Let's, let's assume that Ministry of Power has failed us. Does that mean that Parliament has to fail us too? They are there to represent us. 
So every Ghanaian that feels the same way I feel, we demand an apology from Parliament that they should come and tell Ghanaians that they have failed us. But the explanation this, this member of parliament is uh, giving is that this was brought under the certificate of emergency. Uh, you know, when uh, um, bills or, or documents are brought on this, uh, they, they have the right to bring this on the certificate of emergency. And uh, the committee has nothing to do about it. Once it's no, on, I, on I a honestly, certificate I of emergency, they have to that. deal with it as such. Certificate of emergency, yes, it tells that there's an urgency matter. Yes, I can agree the agency with all these power stuff when in the height of it, the president has appointed Mr. Donko and he was with all vigor to try and get this going. But there is nothing that stops them from doing their due diligence. Okay? Now, my point is that even if it costs 220 million a GE or in Europe, let's now add 100 million for all the excuses and all the work somebody thinks that needs to be done. Right. Okay? Right. That still brings us to 320. Right. What is the rest? Where is the rest? You understand? And right. my point is that I, I, I don't like when businessmen business are baptized in, 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 in these instances. The businessmen came with their proposal. The government didn't have to take it. Parliament didn't have to approve it. But we did. So why is somebody blaming a businessman? Why is somebody blaming uh, some, calling somebody a froster who lives in Europe? They didn't put a gun to anybody's head. I mean, the people that are paid with taxpayers' money to safeguard the little resources that we have, the fact that we are a third world country and we are able to now dwell out all these monies in a contract for five years. Look, it's true that no money has been paid, but I can assure you that if you go to the Western banks and you have such a contract rectified by parliament, which is worth 510 million over five years, you can discount it in the bank. It's worth money. So it yeah. does, it, it, it does, you don't have to pay the guy the money. Over five years, he's going to make that money. When you hear that, oh, they say a footballer is worth 80 million because he signed a five year deal, it means that if he plays football for five years, he will be paid his wages after that amount of money. And that is what we, we've done. We knew five years, that we, me and you, last week, we all argued for this uh, increases in tariffs in because tariffs. we said it's a necessary evil. You understand? Right. And me and you are the ones now, all this increase we are going to pay is going to go to some company that is going to $2 million in profit so, 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 so the, the, the other argument, actually, is the fact that the, the Metka company, which owns the turbines, we're told, are being paid an amount of just $350 million. And which means the extra $160 million has will be paid to Ameri Group. I mean, that's what is in the agreement. And, and so well, they dear, are just playing dear, a third-party role, and they take home $160 million. Couldn't well, we have, because, have gone to the Metka because, company ourselves? Because, I mean, that's the issue ASAP is raising. Well, my, 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 ASAP, I mean, my point is that you don't need ASAP to raise this. We don't need a Norwegian company to come up. And then when we attack as a corrupt country, some people don't agree. Because it takes a Norwegian to come and tell you that you are being robbed and now it becomes a big deal. We so it, it, it's, it's an agreement, but it's not been paid yet. Is it possible to reverse yeah, it or it's agreement. another you judgment debt if we, no, we, you we can't decide come out. to reverse this can't. agreement? No, no, we can't come out, my dear. We can't come out of that agreement. Forget it. The agreement that is rectified by Parliament, if you are going to come out, it's going to cost you more than the agreement. So let's forget about coming out of it. We've been, we've been, we've been, we've been uh, taken to the slaughterhouse. We've been slaughtered. Let's just cry, moan over it, make noise as we are doing and we always do. It's not going to be the last. I'm sure it's going to happen again because the people that we put in there to protect our don't care. They do not care. How is it that somebody will come into a country like Ghana, a third world country, and walk away with one sixty million dollar? As if we don't value the money. Well, many thanks to Kojopoku for your contribution on today's big story. We're extremely grateful for your time. Francis, uh, you heard Kojopoku uh, and, and the fact that we, uh, ASAP is also raising the same issue mm -hmm. that why don't we go to Metka ourselves and we make Amery, uh, the group, play just a middleman role and we're paying them a whopping $160 million. What for? Well, you speak to the people in the industry and, and they say that the 220 million will have got you the generators and that's it. That's it. So for Metka, 
we have the company that will bring it in, set it up, ensure that we get the power out of it, I'm maintain sure it, the equipment. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Metka because right. Amery gave the contract to Metka to okay. handle. Okay. So they so they just went for the contract from us and said, okay, Metka has the expertise in handling All the build, the operate, build, own, operate, and transfer agreement. So okay. they gave it to them to handle. Okay. What we don't know is what goes into the 160 million difference. Right. You speak to people in, in the industry and they tell you that, okay, some work needs to be done. The ancillary works that the power ministry mentioned, mentioned. Uh, that has to be done at uh, the site in the western region talk about the platform that has to be set up the switch that has that also has to be set up right. and then other issues to do with fuel right. all come in here right. we don't know if that will rack up to 160 million those answers we don't have okay. and clearly some unanswered questions uh, we have that have not yet been answered but you speaking with uh, this member of uh, parliament and, and i think you also spoke with chairman of the parliamentary select committee on mines and energy uh Muta wakilo adams yes. and, and he says they will he's, look he's actually the vice chairman of the he committee. says they will look into the matter yes. uh, what does he mean by that no he says that the matter is plain and simple it came before the committee they scrutinized it it was it was allowed to go and then um after the committee finished this work he went to the plenary to be before the house and you all voted for it so he feels that the matter is simple it's done we should leave it per their own checks the scrutiny was done well enough i'm told we have a member of uh, the energy and mines committee of parliament Oredu edu on the phone many thanks for your time honorable thank you very much the name is actually oreku Edu. Oreku, yes, I apologize for that. Oreku Edu, Honorable William Oreku Edu. Well, you, you raised the issue of uh, actually mentioning it at the committee level that this plant could cost us $220 million. And so we, sh we shouldn't take the chance of paying $510 million. So how come at the end of the day we signed for $510 million? Uh, thank you very much. Unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity to listen to it. My good friend, Mr. Boache, is speaking. Um, but basically, when the agreement came before us, as you, uh, you probably know, um, uh, some of us raised um, issues with the cost of um, the um, uh, machines, the generators that came before us. Um, and as a result of that, the ministry went away and came back with um, comparative analysis. And I, I, I do believe, um, I've just been told that Mr. Boache has enumerated that. They came back with some figures um, the comparative analysis, BOT as opposed to um, straightforward purchase, and if we were to rent it over the same period, and that is where there was some discrepancy. Because whilst we were arguing for 220 million for the equipment cost, they came back to say that according to their checks, it was 411. Um, now I think we've been, but I just caught the last end of Mr. Boache's statement that. He, he was talking about the, what he thinks is going to happen to the 160 million, whether it's part of the fuel or whatever, whatever. Right. The, when you look at the agreement, the uh, clause 10, it refers you to Annex G. And Annex G, it is stated clearly there that equipment payment, there's no mention of any additional or auxiliary cost. It talks about equipment payment, $850,000 per month per unit plain and simple times 10 times 12 gives you 102 so if somebody comes back now today to tell us that the 510 million dollars is inclusive of other ancillary costs and things that i beg to differ so, it is not quite the case so as a committee what do you intend to do about this i mean at this stage um it's a bit difficult but i do believe uh, that there's talk going on i've had a word with some seniors of, on my side of um, the house, and um, hopefully tomorrow there will be some moves to see if uh, both sides can come together um, the, at the leadership level and see if something can be done about it. You know, I've heard people saying that those of us on the committee were sleeping and that we did not raise any is the issues that, were, um, that came up. We raised them. I mean, check your, your website on the 8th of, of the 4th, that is the 8th of uh, April, 2015. I even went to the extent of petitioning the president to intervene with his high office to abrogate this contract, which never happened. So we spoke about it. Unfortunately, at plenary, we never had the opportunity, some of us. I think the speaker allowed only one person to speak on that day, and the rest of us did not get the opportunity to speak, even though we had raised this issue at committee um, level. As you know, the committee, the way it works, we try to um, come up with consensus, and on the floor of the House, 
um, um, other sentiments are opportunities given for other feelings to be um, aired. Unfortunately, we, some of us, did not get opportunity to state uh, our view, um, and it went through. But um, like I was saying, I hope that um, something is done at um, leadership level to see if we can have another look at this agreement. I don't think it is um, dead and gone. No, we probably can do uh, something about it because um, the, 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 the issues are not the, the best. I think it can do better. Is it possible for this deal to be reversed if indeed there is some foul play or uh, this will inure to another judgment debt if it's cancelled? Oh, I, 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 of course, I mean, this all has to be done through negotiation. Um, you can't just go and um, abrogate contracts like that. Uh, I am sure that the company and um, the Ministry of Power have reasonable relationship that they could probably sit down again and see if they can do something about, 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 about it. Because, um, I mean, it really is not the best. And I feel sorry for my, my friend, the Honorable Minister. I, I don't honestly believe that he negotiated this. <laughs> I'm sure by the time he was appointed already, that the agreement has already been, been uh, agreed to. I right. mean... <laughs> And then he just came in to sign it. So unfortunately, now everybody is pointing <laughs> fingers really. at him. Yeah, yeah. So it's not the best feeling. And um, we we pointed we pointed them out. And now uh, the, the, the government and uh, its people seem to be um, accusing the the person who arrested the thief more than the thief himself. <laughs> and that should not be the case. Well, many thanks to you, Honourable William Oriku Edu. He is a member of the Mines and Energy Committee in Parliament. He says that tomorrow the committee will meet and look at how best this issue can be handled. But he also raises a critical issue that uh, the, the, the side of the House mentioned this, that look, $510 million is on the higher side, but of course, uh, minority voice is in low in Parliament. So we'll be looking forward to what comes out from the Committee of Mines and Energy tomorrow. Many thanks for watching today's big story. My name is Aishi Bryan. Good evening.